Hi everyone, Ron Spomer here with Ron Spomer Outdoors. Say, I write uh, for several magazines and I review optics for them. So I'm always looking at binoculars and uh, scopes and I've got a good one today that I want to test out. I'm going to be reviewing a new binocular that I'm really impressed with. Let's jump right to it. You know, it's hard to tell sometimes, but even back and forth this quickly. By the time you set them down and look, you've forgotten. But this is pretty impressive. What I have here on top is something new called Tract, T-R-A-C-T. -T. And wow, I mean, it, it compares so favorably to these. You know, and these are a couple of the, the highest quality, most respected binocular brands in the world. You just can't find anything bad to say about them other than maybe the price but a Swarovski and a Zeiss they're just kind of top of the heap and here's this little track it's an 8x42 and I mean it it's just really spectacular what I'm doing right now is looking toward the rising sun over at that mountain because that really tests the binocular you've got that light that glare right in so you're going to find out how much flare and glare there is and then if you move it off just a little bit to the side and you look into that dark shadowy part of the mountain and you can still see incredible detail without a bunch of orange haze all over it, that tells you you've really got good light control in a binocular. And that's really what's important in a binocular is how it controls the light. It's not just brightness because if you have brightness without good contrast control, it's just a fuzzy bright scene. You want to be able to see detail and color contrast. And you get that with the ingredients in this track binocular. So come on in and let's look at all the parts and I'll try to explain why. Some of it I understand pretty well. Some of it's a little bit of voodoo, but we're working with light and bending it. So initially the light comes through that objective lens and you can probably see a little bit of color in there. If those lenses reflect a little bit of color, that is the result of the anti-reflection coatings. And those are critically important in a binocular or any optical instrument because they use phase um, wave cancellation to increase brightness. That's where it gets a little bit fuzzy for you. The scientists will get this really quickly, but you know, it's rocket science because you're playing with light, but you bend the light a certain way through this thin, thin, microscopically thin layer of material, this anti-reflection coating, and then it bounces some of it off and the waves cancel each, each other out because they get it just the right wavelength. So that's a critical part. It's got fully multi-coated optics that every air to glass surface throughout this binocular has these coatings on it. And that's what makes it so bright. One of the things that makes it so bright. The next thing you've got for really good um, image quality is an ED glass right here up front. And that's extra low dispersion glass. And what that does is it, is it corrects for chromatic aberration, which is color variation. So when you put light through a prism, through a glass and you see the rainbow, that's breaking up white light into its spectrum. Well, you don't want to see that coming into your eye. You want it all to come back together to be perfectly in line with one another, stacked just perfectly so that it looks normal and not fuzzy. It doesn't have a colored edge around it. The chromatic aberration is usually seen as a purplish fringe around whatever object you're looking at. And if you control that as well as this one does, you just don't have it. That ED glass really takes care of that. So then you're going through the system, picking up, um, pushing more light through until you get to the prisms, those glass prisms inside of here. And these have schmidt peccan prisms, and those require a mirror on one of the surfaces. And the mirrors can be made out of aluminum or silver, or the latest is a dielectric coating. And that's real similar to the anti-reflection coatings that are on the lenses. It just uses an ultra-thin deposition, vapor deposition, sometimes there's a chemical deposition, but they apply those layers just thick enough so they get that same wave cancellation thing so you don't lose light. So it makes it incredibly bright and you don't get the tarnishing. Silver over time will eventually tarnish and you'll start to lose a little bit of brightness. That's the advantage of the dielectric mirror. It has phase coated prisms and that's important to keep the uh, image quality up. You get a little bit of distortion when you run that light through those prisms if you don't phase code it. So they've got it phase corrected there. And then it comes out through the eyepieces and you've got good big eyepiece. So you've got 
a lot of room for your eye to find the image without the edge blackout. And of course, a lot of that is determined by the exit pupil. And the exit pupil is the size of that little column of light that comes out of the binocular. I don't know if you can see it right there, but there's a little circle of bright light in there. When you get your eye to the right eye relief, bingo, right about there. And then you get the full view through that little pu pupil called an exit pupil. And that has to match up with your own pupil. So if your eye is uh, shrunk way down to like two and a half millimeters or three millimeters, you don't need a very big exit pupil to get the whole view. But if it's low light, and your eye is dilated to six or seven millimeters, you want a bigger exit pupil in a binocular. Yeah, that is determined by the objective lens diameter divided by the power. So this is an eight by 42. So how many times does eight go into 42? About four. I'm a great mathematician, by the way. Not four. My cameraman saying, you, you blew it again, buddy. <laughs> this is why I became a writer instead of a mathematician. <laughs> But that exit pupil is big enough for most of daylight, all daylight viewing, really. And I find that this is going to give me a great image as late as 45 minutes after sunset on a clear day. And on a cloudy day, I can go 30 minutes easily. But the amazing thing is I can go out on a full moonlight with these and I can still see deer running on the hillsides quite clearly. You know, it's a little bit dark, but that anti-reflection coating business going on in there makes it unbelievably bright without having to have a huge objective lens binocular. You know, you can get those really big 50s and even 56s, and they're great for ultimate brightness because obviously they're gonna open that exit pupil. And you've got more room before your eye starts to see the edge blackout if you're moving around like this. You don't have to be perfectly centered. But with a smaller binocular like this, you don't have all that bulk and weight, so it's much easier to use and carry around. It's a little bit of a compromise, but everybody has to do it at some stage or another. So I have found these incredibly effective in, in all light conditions. Now mechanically, let's look at some of the features. We've got a magnesium body on here. Lightweight, incredibly strong, armor coated. It's got the, the little objective covers on it, strapped on. I never really like those because I don't wanna lift a binocular when I see something really quickly and not remembering those are on and I go, oh, what the, and then I have to take them off. You know, it seems like a small thing, but boy, when you're in the field, especially birding, you want to see something really quickly, you rip those up. I just like to have those off. No big deal. You just pull them off. So we'll get that done. So you've got that magnesium body on there, and uh, here's your focus ring, and it doesn't have one of those silly pull up and down and move it around things for your diopter. The diopter is where I think it should be, on the barrel. So you can make your adjustments by lifting the locking diopter up, turning it until this barrel matches the eye on this one. Human eyes aren't necessarily always the same. One might have a one diopter uh, difference in its focus than the other. So you make your adjustments on the ring, you lock it down, and you're not accidentally going to bump it the way you often do on some of the binoculars I have on here or a loose one flying around on here. You make that adjustment one time and you probably don't need to touch it for the next 10 years. So the eye cups, everybody's making great rubber coated eye cups and they're really nice, especially if you have glasses like I do. You're not gonna get them scratched because of that nice nitrile rubber. And they move up and down to the next stage and look at it, it's locked in. Move it to the next stage, locked in again. So you can customize those for your eyes. And that depends on how deeply your eyes are sat into your face, according to your bone structure. So you've got every option. I usually have mine down because of the glasses, and then I can put that nitrile rubber right up against my glasses, and that helps stabilize the binocular. Oh, man. But what's impressive about this binocular overall is the view. You just really need to compare it, and that's what I do when I test binoculars. You know, I take a, a brand like a Swarovski, and I've got, okay, I know what I'm up against here. I've got the best of everything in a Swarovski binocular. And that's what my view is like. And now let's just compare it to this one. Wow. I'm sorry, folks, but it's hanging right in there. And I think the retail suggested price on this thing is around $680 or so. So if you are looking for one heck of a high-quality binocular that's not going to cost an arm and a leg and half the family farm, Check out this Tract brand. This is a Tract 8x42. It comes in 10x42, and I saw a 12x42. And this one is called the Toric 
UHD, I'm sure the HD is standing for high definition, and that refers probably to the ED glass in there to correct that chromatic aberration. Um, boy, beyond that, I just can't think of anything else that's going on in that binocular that one would need to know about. Once again, take a look. If you can, compare it with your friends Zeiss, or Swarovski, or Leica, or any of the other big brands out there. I think you're going to be really impressed. This Toric. It's a well-designed binocular. Man, I'd have trouble turning that one down. So that's the, that's the news on Attract Toric 8x42. I'd recommend it. Heck of a binocular. They helped right up on that hill yesterday. You know, two days ago. Yesterday there was a new one up there. Today when I want to show off with a new binocular, I've got faith just in that. For more information on firearms, ballistics, optics, and hunting, subscribe to Ron Spomer Outdoors' YouTube channel. And check out our informative and entertaining website, ronspomeroutdoors.com.